Today I'm going to show you how to use Arch Linux, how to set it up step by step on top of M1 MacBook. And hopefully it can save you some time. I'm going to search for Arch Linux installation using UTM. And first link to GitHub that mentions M1 is going to give us the ISO that we can use to install the Arch Linux. I'm going to go ahead and download it. Then we click create machine, virtualize because it's faster, Linux, and select the ISO that we downloaded. I don't change anything here, only the name. It's going to be Arch ARM64. We start it. Next, I'm going to run lsblk to show the disks that we have and type cgdisk.dev-vda to format the raw disk that just has plenty of space. First, we're going to need to create the boot partition. Boot is used to start off our system. The next one will be swap. Swap is whenever we load too much RAM, uh, we're going to build the data into disk. And that's what Linux uses for swap. Uh, finally, we use the free space for Linux file system. So any files that we store are going to go there. Once it's done, we're going to need to properly format new disks. Uh, now, as you can see, one, two, three are the disks that we created. First one, boot, needs to be formatted with uh, the command mkfs f f32 def vda1. Next one, make swap uh, vda2 and swap on vda2. Finally, we format the Linux file system using xt4. Once it's ready, uh, we go into mount newly created partitions starting with the file system we mount it to mnt folder and inside newly mounted folder we create a boot folder this way we can also mount the startup partition so that we can run the system inside our container in the meantime i'm typing the command backstrap this one is used to link to load the basic libraries onto our newly created file system. After that, we're going to need to persist the outlay that we use for the file system. So all the disks that we mentioned. So that next time we reboot, the file remembers how the system should look like. Then we type arch truth and that jumps us into our system that we configured properly. Next step is to set up the time zone that we need to use in the laptop. Now for me, it's gonna be Copenhagen, but you might need to use something closer to you. And aside from the time zone, we're gonna to need to synchronize the clock. Also, we have to make sure that we use the correct language layout. We're going to search for US layout, uncomment it, and generate the locale file so that our system uses the proper layout. And we're going to need to persist it as well. So that next time we reboot the computer, it remembers what layout to use. Uh, our virtual machine gonna need a name. I'm gonna give it a custom name, Bane Machine. 
Finally, we can give our root user the password. And also we need to create a normal user. I'm gonna call the user pane and give it access to will, storage, and power. And set up the password as well. I'm going to also install the system files. So Linux libraries, this is going to generate the kernel. To be able to boot the system, we need to select the bootloader. And by default, it is drop. The bootloader is going to help us to load the kernel properly and define the architecture configuration that we want to use in the future. So to be able to use our system, we need to set it up and make sure that it is configured for the proper architecture. One more thing, we need to install DHCP CD module. It's going to be used for our internet setup. But in order to do that, we have to enable it using the enable DHCP service. Then we are ready to shut down the machine. So press Ctrl D, log out, and go to the configuration of the virtual machine. We're going to unlink existing ISO file so that the system can boot using the bootloader. So we log in as a root user and check that internet is working. Installed MOOCs. And I'm just going to show you that system is working. Install a couple of libraries to display the text nicely. After that, you can configure needed desktop managers so that you can have the experience that you want. I have attached the videos that you might use in order to configure the visual aspect after so that you have some point of reference of where to go from here. Thank you for watching.